Hey guys, today we're gonna be making a random quote generator that's gonna look something like this. We're gonna have a quote on the top, we're gonna have an author here, we're gonna have two buttons, one is gonna get a random quote each time we click on it, and to make it a bit interesting we're gonna be changing this to a random color each time we get a new quote. So if I click get quote here, we still might get the same color because there are only like six colors. And then here we can tweet that, so if we click tweet, it's going to open our Twitter with that quote. And we're going to be using this API right here. So type.fit slash API slash quotes to get our quotes here. So we can close this. And here, the first thing we want to do, we're going to import use state from React. And then inside our app, we're going to have a single state that's going to contain all the quotes. So let's call it quotes. and set quotes. And we're gonna set that initially to an empty string here. So what we wanna do once we get the data, we don't wanna get all of them. We are only gonna be displaying one of them each time and it's always gonna be random. So because they have like a lot of them here, probably like thousands of quotes. So we're gonna make a function under that that's gonna get our quotes. So let's call it get quote. And we're going to make it an arrow function. When inside of that, we're going to use fetch. And we can copy this whole link right here that they give us. Then after the fetch, we're going to have dot then. We're going to get the response back. And we're going to set that to response.json. Then we're going to have another dot then. We're going to get back the data. And for now, let's just console.log data. So now I need a way to fire this function. So for now, let's just remove this here and we're just gonna add a single button. And let's add some text here. So get quote. And we're gonna add a click event, so on click. And we can just call this function we made, which is get quote. So now once we click that, we're gonna be console log all the data we get. So if I click that quote, you can see we get a lot of them here. So there are like thousands of objects. And this is not even gonna work if I try opening it. It's not even gonna show it here, but we're gonna get the text and the author here. So for example, if we console log data zero, let's reload this and click the button. We're gonna get an object and this object has text and author. So we can get each of these. So that's exactly what we need. But instead of hard coding zero here, we're going to get a random number. So to do that, we're going to make a variable. And let's remove this console log completely. Move this to a new line as well. And we can call it random number. So we can do let random num equals. And we're going to use math.for first to round up the numbers. Then we're going to use math.random times and the data we get dot length. So now we have a random number each time. And in our case, we want to update this state, which is quotes. So we can use this setter function to update that. So we can do is set quotes. And first, we're going to set it to that data that we logged. That's all of these objects we have here. But then we want to get a single one. So we're going to pass an array brackets. And instead of hard coding the number here, we're going to use this variable we made to get a random number. So let's do a random num here. And now each time we're going to get a random quote. So if we wanted to show that, for example, here we have text and author. So maybe let's just show text for now. So that would be inside our quotes state dot text. So here we can do quote or quotes dot text. And now if we click get quote, you're going to see that. If we click get quote again, we're going to get a new one. So that works perfectly fine. But we also want to get this data once the page loads as well. Not only when we click on this button. So to do that, we're going to import another hook, which is use effect. And then here, we're going to call use effect. We're going to pass an arrow function. And we only want this to run once. And inside of that, we can just call this function we made, which gets our data. So we get quote and we just want to call it here 
And now we're going to have a random message each time we reload the page and also when we click the button. So if we reload here, you're going to see another message. So now instead of these two, let's remove them and we can add our div with the class name of quote. Then inside a div, we're going to have two paragraphs. So just make one and pop it here. And the first one is going to be our quote. So we have that stored inside this state, which is quotes. So it's going to be quotes, and then we have dot, we have text and author. So this is going to be dot text. And the next one is going to be essentially the same. So just quotes and then dot author. And then under that, we're going to make a div. So inside a quote, we're going to make a div with a class name of PTN container. And here we're going to add a button first. And we can also add a class name of BPM. And then here we're just going to say get quote. And then under the button we're going to make an anchor link. And we're also going to add it a class name of BTN. So they're, have, they're going to have some same classes or some same styles. We can close that here. And this is just going to say tweet. And for now, let's add an extra. That's just going to be an empty string for now. We're going to add something else here. So that's all the things we need here. And then we can come back to CSS. And later on, we're going to change the color and also make this active so we can actually tweet the message. So if we go to our styles.css, I'm going to remove this completely. We're going to add some basic styles like box sizing, a border box, and we're also going to remove margin and padding. Then we can target our app here. We're going to make it full height first. So main height on the page. We're going to add a display flex just so we can center this quote or this container we're going to have here. And we're also going to add a background. Then under that, we can target this day, which is quote. So let's target that. We're going to make it full width. And we're also going to add a max width of 400 pixels and a min height of 180 pixels. So it's never going to go under 180 pixels in height, even if we have a text like this, or maybe we can have a single line of text. It's always going to be at least 180 pixels in height. We're going to add some padding of 30 pixels and background of 333. And we can add margin auto here to center it. And after the background, we're going to add a border radius of 4 pixels to each side. We're going to add a box shadow, which is going to be 4 pixels, 4 pixels, 1 pixel. And then we're going to do RGBA 0, 0, 0, and then 0.5. To get this right here on the side and we're also going to add flex here so we're going to do display flex we're going to make it in a column and we're going to add justify content space between and we're also going to align items flex stop then for our paragraph we're going to add a color of white font size of 17 pixels and word wrap of break word then we want to target our last paragraph, so we can do P, last of type. And we just want to add a bit of margin for top and bottom, so we're going to do margin and pixel zero. And some styles for our button, we're just going to remove the border, so border none, and outline none. And we're going to add a margin right of 12 pixels here. And then we can target our anchor link as well here. We're going to add text decoration none. To remove the underline. I'm gonna add a display of inline block and text align center. And then we have a class name of BTN for both of them, button and anchor link. So we want to target that to apply some same classes. Firstly, we're gonna add a background here, which is gonna be blue. We're gonna have a color of white. 
you can add some width of like 80 pixels, padding of 7 pixels 0, so top and bottom only, and 0 on the left and right. We're going to add a font size of 14 pixels, with a radius of 4 pixels, and cursor of pointer here. And since we're going to have a hover, we're just going to add some transition here and do something like all. Let's do 700 milliseconds, is in out. And then at the end, we're going to add hover, so BTN on hover. We're just going to change uh, background here. So now if we hover it, these are the styles we have. So these are going to be all the styles for this app. Now we can go back to our app.js. So we're going to move this into a new line just so we have some space. We're also going to move this and this into a new line as well. So our href is going to be, we're going to add template literals here, but we need to add curly braces before and after that if we use template literals. So like this, we can do https column slash slash twitter dot com and then we're going to do slash intent slash tweet. And also let's make this a bit bigger just so you guys can see everything. So slash intent slash tweet. Then question mark text equals. And then here we want to add some text. So if we did like hello. And here we just want to add target equals underscore blank. To open it in a new tab. And then under that we also want to add l equals no opener. No repeater. Let's reload this and let's click on tweet and we're gonna see that message of hello. And if we change this to like hello one, let's save that, we're gonna get hello one. So in our case, what we wanna get is this quote and we have that inside this state, which is quotes and then dot text here to access that object. So we can do the same thing for this text instead of writing hello, we can add dollar sign curly braces and we're gonna do quotes dot text. So now if we click on tweet, we're going to get this quote that we have. There we go. So that works perfectly fine as well. So now what we need to do is connect this function we have with our button. So for this button right here, we're just going to add the same on click event we had before. And we're just going to call get quote. So we're going to get a random quote because of this use effect every time the page loads for the first time. So it's always going to be random. And if we click get quote, we're also going to get a random quote here. And one thing here, so before the author, let's just add some text like author, column, and space here. Just so we have that. And then we can get a quote. And then we can tweet as well. Click here. So now the last thing is adding the colors. So let's scroll all the way back. And here, under this state, we're going to make uh, an array of few colors. So we can do let colors equals, and then we're going to have array here. And we're going to have two more colors. So this, this is the array of five colors we're going to have here. And then we want to apply that to this text right here. So we're going to import another hook that's called use wrap. So here we can import use wrap. And we're going to use that to target our element, which is this paragraph right here. So how we can create that is we can come here and we're going to do const and then the name we want to give it. In our case, let's call it text wrap. And that's going to be equal to this use wrap. And how we can connect that here is we just add this variable we made to this paragraph. So we will just do a ref equals text wrap. And now we can change the styles or anything else we want to this paragraph using this hook. So when do we want to do that? In our case, we want to do that every time this quote changes. So every time we click the button, the quote is going to change. And only then we want to change the color to something else. So we're going to create another use effect here. And 
the difference between this one and the last one is here we're going to have a dependencies. So a dependency is going to be quotes. This state we have right here. So every time this quote changes, we're going to add a different color to this paragraph. So how we can access that is by using this variable we made, so text ref. Then we need to add dot current dot style dot color. And that's going to be equals to our color array. And then we're going to pick a specific color right here. So we're going to pass an array brackets. And here we're going to do math.floor again to round up the numbers. And we're going to add math.random times our array, which is colors dot length. So now every time that post changes, everything inside this use effect is going to fire. So for example, if we click the button now, this is going to change to this pink color we have. It's going to change to green. We might get, we're getting the green again. Green, yellow, pink, and so on. So now we have that working as well. So that would be it for this final project. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.